Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Nine Any Know It All podcast. I am your host, Josh, and this is episode number 15. And it's hard to believe I actually was just doing some uh, checking on stuff earlier to see um, just, you know, when we started it and that type of stuff. And this actually started on March 17th. So right now, I've only been doing this for 20 days. It's the 15th episode. It's been amazing. I'm, I'm loving what we're doing right now. And it's so much fun. And I want to say thank you to everybody who's been listening. So if you go to my 90 Know It All gear website, it's a threadless page. There's a link on the 90 Know It All website. I have cut all the prices on the gear. It's all down to the base cost. Just whatever I pay, you guys would pay too. I just want to say thank you once again to, to all the listeners, everybody who's been supporting me. It means a lot to me. And you know, I just wanted to give back a little bit. But guys, today I'm excited. The guest today is Justin Mosier. He's a CEO and GM of the Highline Bears, which is a summer collegiate league team here in the Northwest. I've actually got to see them play in the past uh, when they've played some different West Coast League teams. But you know, it's fun to be able to talk to different individuals you know, at the different levels, whether it be college, high school, summer leagues, all that stuff, just to see the different perspectives and the different things that are going on with baseball here in the Northwest, because a lot of people underestimate the talent level and just the, the amazing atmospheres and locations that we have here in the Northwest. So with that, guys, let's just jump right into it. Justin, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thanks so much for having me. Excited to be here. Awesome. I'm excited to have you on. And, you know, obviously last week I got to talk to Ben Harley, the, the head coach for the, for the bears. What's it like to have him, as your coach, I believe he started out as a pitching coach for the team, but he's moved now up to the head coaching spot. What What are your thoughts on him and having him in that position? Yeah, I love Ben. He's great. Um, we communicate almost every day, uh, reaching out, especially with everything going on right now. And it's been awesome working with him. Uh, we found him last year um, through Twitter, I think. He w- interacted with our former head coach, and then we went down to Oregon to interview him and then actually followed and watched him. He was a head coach at a high school down there and uh, watched him coach there. He, he didn't even know we were going to be watching him coach. I think we drove an extra two hours to see that because Oregon's uh, high school leagues are so spread out on the coast there. And so uh, we really got to know him last year and he was great. And then we had the head coach position open up and we had a ton of different applicants Um, But Ben just really got what we're trying to build both on the field and off the field and the whole community environment. And we just decided he was the right guy for the job. So he's done a great job recruiting and on paper, I think this is the best team we've ever had. And uh, we've got more division one players and two players than we've ever had before. So we're excited, hoping we can get back on the field and, and see what he's really put together. Yeah, and then, you know, obviously a lot of people, they don't realize how much time and recruiting goes into the summer leagues. You know, obviously people get it for like the colleges themselves, whether it be, you know, Division One or NWAC, that type of stuff. But for the summer leagues, you guys have to spend a lot of time getting to know coaches, getting to really create that pipeline of coaches sending guys your direction. So what are some things you guys have to really focus on when you're recruiting and things that you guys really try and achieve? Yeah, you know, uh, you hit it on the head there. It's building the relationships with the coaches and especially, you know, college coaches move around so much. And a lot of times you're dealing with the recruiting guys. You're not maybe not necessarily dealing with the head coach and head coaches seem to have a little bit longer tenure. And obviously the associate coaches and recruiting coordinators and things for schools are usually trying to climb the ladder wherever they can. So a lot of times they bounce around. So Uh, building those solid relationships so they come back to you. And us being a little bit newer, and then we're in uh, the Pacific International League. um, And so that league kind of has some stigmas that college coaches don't like it. And so we're working around that. And obviously the West Coast League is the premier league in our area. So they get, you know, the top choices for D1 guys. And it's us convincing the college coaches and programs that we're going to provide what's best for their players. And so that's what we're doing. Ben's done a great job and really trying to build those relationships long term. So if Ben ends up moving on or getting a gig somewhere else and he's not able to be with us during the summer, we're able to still have those long term relationships with schools. Absolutely. And then, you know, you mentioned the the Highline Bears. They are relatively new. Uh, Give us a little background on how the team started and just uh, kind of the things that's happened over the last couple of years. 
you know, we've had a rich history in our community in uh, White Center and Southwest Washington and at our stadium of baseball. Back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, baseball was huge here on Friday and Saturday nights. Uh, the King and his court um, used to play here. They used to have people like Floyd Bannister played here. Ken Knutson uh, played in our stadium. And the stadium burnt down. It was uh, originally a wooden stadium. It burnt down in May of 77. And then it was rebuilt a few years later. Um, out of cement and it's the structure we play in now and it was named after Mel Olson who got it rebuilt but baseball just was never the same you know it's been home to uh, some some leagues and some uh, some teams that pop in and out and you know Seattle Prep High School local high school does a great job and they got it remodeled in 2008 and it's a nice turf field and so we partner with them and work with them but outside of them in a, a local men's league and the local little league there was never any high level of baseball that was playing here. So we came together and we decided we wanted to bring something back. Uh, I'll be the first to admit, we had no idea what we were doing the first few years, I'm really trying to figure out what we were doing. And now I think we're really hitting our stride and understanding that we're providing the community, one, a high level of baseball, providing some uh, college players a great place and great environment to develop their skills and be the best that they can be, but also providing fun and really affordable family entertainment and just a nonstop show. Uh, you know, baseball happens to be one thing that's going on at our show and, you know, we're putting on a circus. And so how can we have fun? How can we do crazy things on and off the field to make sure people are coming back over and over again, whether they're a baseball fan or not? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you mentioned the Keenan's court and that actually kind of brings up some memories for me. And my dad and I were just talking about that the other day because I actually got to see, uh, them play when I was a kid and it was actually pretty amazing so if you don't know who King and his court is uh, look it up online I think there's some stuff uh, that you can see online but you mentioned that you know you guys try and provide uh, you know a good cheaper option for families because that's something that um, is is important to me because I mean I've got uh, two daughters and, and my wife so going to games is expensive and it, it, especially like Mariner games so you know, what things do you guys do for the family to really kind of bring them out and give them something fun to do? Well, tickets are cheap. Um, that's where we want to start. You know, I want to be cheaper than every um, movie theater and every bowling alley and anything we can do so that you can bring the whole family of four out and not break the bank. So, you know, our tickets, highest price is eight dollars. Um, youth and senior, uh, youth ages nine to 12 and then seniors and military are $5, and then kids eight and under are free. And we do that, and then they come in, we try to keep concessions affordable, and our concession stand manager, Joanne, does an amazing job. It's not a snack shack, um, it is a concession stand. We're serving loaded baked potatoes, we're serving great hot dogs, we're serving uh, pulled pork nachos, and she comes up with different things all the time. And then we're doing theme nights. You know, last year, uh, one of our fan favorites was we did Christmas in July. All the players had on ugly sweaters that had numbers on the back for jerseys. Uh, the players got into it and were wearing Santa hats. One player put on a beard um, to, to look like Santa while playing. We had an actual Santa Claus uh, roaming the stands, handing out gifts to kids. Uh, we did a first snowball instead of a first pitch. Um, every player's walk-up song was Christmas themed. And we did Christmas carols in the stands. We handed out free s'mores in the seventh inning. Uh, we just had a ton of fun, and that's what we're always trying to do. What can we do that's creative, different, and nonstop fun for everybody? So there's always something going on between every single inning and before the game and after the game. And that, that's what we're trying to do is just make the ballpark a fun place to be. That is absolutely amazing. I love that idea. I love that. That's one of the things I love about summer ball especially is, yes, guys are, are serious and trying to get better, but it's also an opportunity where they can truly just enjoy the game have fun and you know that's one of the things why I love you know teams like yourself and, and leagues like uh the West Coast League and you know the Cascade Collegiate League because yes it's there's serious baseball going on but it's also it's just fun it's enjoyable you can laugh families can get close to the players and it's just a great atmosphere definitely it really is I I, I love it it's great so you know you mentioned you guys are in the uh PIL uh, can you tell me a little bit about that league? As you mentioned, you know, there was a little bit of a stigma to that. Um, what are some things that that league has really done to try and improve it, its its look and its connection to the, the colleges? 
So, uh, yeah, the, you know, it gets a little bit of a bad rep just because uh, our league allows former college players who no longer have eligibility or former professional players who are trying to um, still play baseball at a high level. And it's that a little bit in between uh, from where a men's league would be and where current college guys would be. And a lot of coaches don't like the idea of a former college guy taking away time and development from their players. Um, now, us as the Highline Bears, we only have um, college players, so we very much run on a full collegiate roster. Uh, so we're very we're a little bit different from some of our competition in our league. But I'll tell you, some of the players in our league just they're great competitors. I mean, you'll get guys who maybe be a little bit older, you know, a late twenties and they're still throwing gas or, you know, they're mixing up their pitches and they have professional experience. And it's actually a really good experience for a lot of our guys because they get to see a pitcher who's a little bit more mature, who's, you know, played at a very, very high level and can still play and still compete. So I love that about our league. Um, and then our league has really been working on getting more guys that are college eligible and more guys and really making sure that colleges know, like we are a place that is highly competitive. And then uh, I know a lot of uh, teams in our league are scheduling games with West Coast League opponents. I think our team uh, really set the standard for that. And we've been really doing a good job of building relationships with as many of the owners and GMs in the West Coast League as possible. My goal every year is how many WCL teams can I get on our schedule? And uh, we've really grown that relationship. And my goal is to one day, you know, hopefully make the jump to the West Coast League because, you know, we're putting on a show like many of those teams do. Uh, a lot of the teams in our league, they focus on the baseball. And it's a very high level of baseball. And I love the league and I love what they're doing and what they're planning. And um, I'm really looking forward to this season. Yeah, it's really it's really fun. I mean, I think I've covered the Highland Bears a couple of times when they've come down to play the Callets Black Bears and that type of stuff. And and really, the thing I've always loved, and I kind of learned a lot more last year when I was covering the Cascade Collegiate League, was that you know even guys who maybe aren't D1 players, maybe they're D2 or they're NAIA or they're you know JUCO guys, they still got talent. And you put them on a field, they can hit the ball, they can still throw it. And, you know, it's fun to see guys play – uh, with that energy and with that excitement, you know, regardless of what level they come from. Definitely. And there's really a need for that. You know, there's a need for guys to be able to develop in the summer. And, you know, especially guys who, you know, we've been through the past, you know, three, four years, we get a ton of red shirts or we get a bunch of guys who maybe didn't get their opportunity to play. And, you know, while it may be a struggle for us in the first few weeks of June, to be as competitive with the other players in our league or other teams that we're playing. Uh, it's great for them because when our goal every year is when they leave our program, they are now going to become a starter or they are a better player for being here. You know, if you're just a summer league and you're out there trying to win games and your record at the end of the day, that, that only lasts so long. I mean, what really matters for these guys is that they go back to their college and they're better right? Or that they developed a third pitch or that they really worked on something their coach gave them. When they hit the weight room, they gained the weight they needed to. Like, how can you get better in the summer? And that's really what we're focusing on because otherwise you're not going to build those relationships with the schools. It's not just here to play games and, uh, you know, get your ABs in. You hear that all the time, or it's just summer ball. That's something we hate to hear. This is a place where you can get better, and it's highly competitive. And what are you going to do with the opportunity that you're being given? And what are we doing as organizations to make sure those players are getting the opportunities? And we're not just looking for Ws, but we're making sure we're putting guys in positions to get better and be a starter when they go back to their school. Yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, most fans couldn't tell you what the record was of their team the last few years, but they can tell you which guys went to play D1 or, or even got drafted and play at the higher levels. So it's important to have that development, but especially, especially for this year. I mean, with no spring sports, I mean, you obviously the need and the importance of summer ball this year is really off the charts. It's unprecedented. You know, you have guys that normally wouldn't play at all in the summer that are now on teams and going to be putting in a lot of innings and a lot of at bats because they haven't gotten that this year. Yeah, that's, that's very true. There, there's a, a lot of question marks obviously going into the summer and a lot of things that are changing and, 
just dynamics are going to be real interesting and it'll be real interesting to see what teams and leagues do um, to be able to accommodate for that. And I'm really hoping everybody does the right thing and they honor the the contracts that have been signed. And if for whatever reason, they're not able to, they're able to help place them in a place where they can play or at least help bridge that gap because, you know, it's obviously not a great time being a baseball player. Um, and, you know, our country's going through a lot and everybody needs to understand, you know, as much as we love baseball and baseball is my life, um, we've got to make sure the health of everyone around us, our family and friends in our community is the top priority. And once, you know, uh, the powers that be say that we're able to get back on the baseball field, making sure that we're doing what's right for the players, um, no matter what level they're at. Now, once again, obviously you're in the Seattle area, so, you know, you're kind of where a lot of this end up starting here in the, the country. How has this impacted you guys and how you're preparing for the summer? How has it um, kind of made you guys reassess things you're going to do or plan to do? I mean, what things have you changed? Or are you still waiting until we get closer to the season to see what's going to fall out? I've, uh, I, we've definitely talked a lot of different contingency plans. Um, we're moving forward as if our season is going to happen as normal. Uh, I will, you know, we're, we pull in partnerships and sponsorships with local businesses and they have all been hit. Most of which are closed right now, you know? Uh, so a lot of those agreements that we had in place and that we've worked on for the past eight or nine months, um, are not going to be happening now, which is going to make us change some things. Um, and that's just, that's just how, you know, that's just how things are going to work this year. Um, but, uh, my main priority is going to be making sure that if we are able to play this summer, what can we provide for our players and making sure that they have the opportunity. And then what can we provide to the community as far as, you know, getting them back out into a ballpark, making sure that it's safe, making sure that it's clean and making sure that they're able to do something. Everybody's cooped up for so long. They're going to be wanting to do something once they're able to. And then we just, we have a lot of different contingency plans in place, whether that's a minimized schedule or what it is, but I think we are definitely in a holding pattern right now. You know, uh, we've only been on, uh, in quarantine and shelter in place for, I think we're going on our fourth week now. So it's been a month, uh, but, uh, we'll, we'll see where we're at, you know, our opening day scheduled for May 30th. Um, we may have to change that, but uh, we won't be making any calls for another few weeks here once we hear how things are going to open up. And if they're going to do it slowly, if they're going to allow spectators, there's just a lot of different things in the, up in the air. And we'll go from there once we get there. Yeah, absolutely. And I know for me personally, obviously, I tend to go to a lot of games each year. But for me, it's it's really difficult, even though I go out and go for walks, to not be at games. And, man, I am just chomping at the bit. And I know I'm not the only one. There are people, even people who are casual fans and not even real fans of baseball that just want to go out and do something. And baseball would be more than enough for them because it, it means getting out. So, once again, I, I, I agree. Once it's safe, but people want to get out. Yeah, they do. And, you know, and, and they want something fun. And this is the time for baseball and sports and, you know, all the way from uh, youth sports, little league, select baseball, high school baseball, unfortunately, was, you know, canceled around the country. And so was uh, college baseball. And, you know, some guys got to play a little bit more based on where they were at. And so hopefully summer ball's here. And I just hope guys know, you know, there's a lot of things you can do at home. You know, it's going to really show who just sat on the couch and played video games and watched Netflix this whole time or who was still getting their work in at home. Um, in a safe way where they could still still do their training on their own and make sure they're staying in shape and getting back and getting ready. And what's really sad is, you know, all these guys work really hard when they work out in the fall, when they get back to school and they work a ton in the winter, and then they get to show off all the work they've done in the, in the spring during games and then come out in the summer and really hone those skills. But it'll be real interesting because I think a lot of that work in the fall and the winter is is going to kind of wear off if they're not working out at home and doing the things they need to do. So it'll be interesting once we're able to get back on the field to see who really kept and stayed focused and had their end goal in mind and uh, really kept working on the things they needed to. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely a, an interesting time. And, you know, I've talked to a few coaches who have said, you know, you're, you're going to see the guys who – are self-motivated and find ways to do it. They'll be successful and the other guys are going to be lagging behind. But, you know, for, for you, Justin, you mentioned, you know, this is baseball is your life. And I completely understand that. 
But to do that, you got to have a love for the game. Kind of how did you develop that love for the game and what are kind of your background in the game itself? Uh, I've loved baseball since I can remember, you know, I, I wanted to be a professional baseball player my entire life. Um, you know, played little league Bronco pony growing up, played some select ball here and there, um, played high school ball. And then, you know, had opportunities to play in uh, college and just thought I was a little bit better than I was. Um, I'm an undersized guy, so I need to work 10 times harder. And, you know, I was, I had a bit of entitlement, uh, like a lot of young guys do. And unfortunately I let the opportunity slip it between my fingers. Uh, so when I saw the PIL, I saw an opportunity, Oh, Hey, maybe I can get back to playing. And then was trying to do the same thing with running the team and just really decided, no, that's not what I want to do. Um, you know, my, my window and opportunity has closed as far as playing baseball goes. And now I'm more interested on, what we can offer for the players and, you know, whoever we have in that position um, being Ben right now, managing the team. Honestly, I don't deal with baseball a ton. Um, I'm focused a lot on running the business of the bears, which is, you know, how can we partner with businesses within our community and how can we put on the greatest show possible for the people of our community? And then making sure that the, all the players needs are met and Ben does a great job of making sure all that's going to be done as well. Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, we've mentioned a few times, you know, in the Northwest, there are a few different uh, summer collegiate leagues. And obviously there's enough players for to fill those leagues because those guys, I mean, all the leagues seem to be overflowing with players. But you have like the West Coast League where each team has their home ballpark and uh, Cascade Collegiate League where all the teams will play at one spot and move around from a location to location. Uh, what are some of the, the positives and the, the things that summer leagues as a whole have to try and overcome uh, when it comes to just preparing for their season and just, you know, trying to build that fan base. Are you talking about just normally or uh, with everything that's going on right now? Uh, right. Let's go with everything that's going on right now. I think it's kind of relevant for that. You know, I don't think I have a, a perfect answer for that. You know, staying connected. My biggest priority right now for us has been, you know, how can we support the local community businesses that are still, you know, doing takeout and still doing things and being vigilant um, that way. Um, I know Ben's doing a great job of keeping uh, in contact with our players, but, you know, it's, it's definitely not an easy time. You know, most of the time right now we'd be out at little league games all the time, promoting what's going on. We'd be doing ticket fundraisers and group fundraisers and everything's kind of on pause. Um, I think just making sure that you're putting the, priority of your community in place, and then really working on your brand. You know, what are you establishing as your brand and what does your brand stand for? And, you know, continuing to try to find different ways to entertain people. And I know we've been working kind of behind the scenes. We're going to be launching some things where we can get a little bit more content out because we've been a little quiet recently, just taking everything day by day. Uh, but really building your brand right now and how can you communicate and support the people around you within the community. And then once you get the green light, it's just, um, going out and saying, Hey, you've been cooped up for a month or two now and let's get outside and let's watch some great baseball. Yeah, definitely. I know that, you know, every time I talk to someone, any, you know, whether Twitter or Facebook or anything, it's just wanting to get outside. And as soon as you get that all clear or, or safe enough to go out and do stuff, people are going to be excited about that. But last question I have for you, Justin, obviously playing baseball, being around baseball, uh, we always, you know, guys get new gloves, break them in, that type of stuff. And how did you, when you were playing, how did you break in your glove when you got a new one? Uh, I think there, were, there, there was a huge evolution of breaking in a glove, you know. Uh, you know, back in the day, it was, you know, let's get the hot glove that you'd put there and throw it in the oven, you know, as a little kid or, you know, put as much oil on it as possible. And, you know, doing that when you're a little leaguer, I think is, is pretty normal. Um, and then, you know, I've even heard, heard stories of people taking $300 gloves and I never did this. I would never do this, but throwing it in a bucket of water, do not do that. That is the worst thing you can do. As I got older and a little bit more e educated, you know, the best thing to do to break in a glove is to play catch with it. You know, it's going to take a while and you know, your glove is your tool. You know, I still have my glove that I've had for, you know, 15 years now. And I have my first glove that I ever used, uh, as a, as a, a three-year-old. So, you know, your glove is your tool and it's your life and you need to, when you're playing baseball, it's so important. So you need to take care of it. You know, a little bit of glove conditioner is great, but that's really to keep it in shape. I wouldn't use a lot of product. 
I would play catch with it and, and keep forming it, bend it and mold it to the shape that you want it to be and need it to be, but continue using it. That's the best way to get your glove into shape and making sure that it lasts a long period of time, because that's the biggest thing. When you use all those extra products on it, it just wears down the leather over time and you just won't be able to use your glove for long periods of time. So take care of your glove. And you know, the biggest thing that I hate is seeing kids throw in their glove on the ground. These gloves cost $300 and, and up, you know, uh, for some of these gloves. So why are you chucking it on the ground? Like place your glove down, treat it nicely. I mean, it, it needs to be your pride and joy, your, your prized possession. That's my, my biggest thing on gloves. Oh, absolutely. I hold mine very tight whenever I have it with me because I do not want it to get stepped on or anything like that. But uh, Justin, I appreciate you coming on. I know I'm excited. You know, if we do get the summer league going, I plan on getting all around the Northwest, including getting up to the Highline Bears and getting up there and just enjoying some baseball. Perfect. We'd, we'd love to have you. Perfect. Well, Justin, thank you again. And once again, have a great day. And I will sure I'll talk to you and see you some other time. Great. Thanks so much. So, ladies and gentlemen, once again, that was Justin Mosier. He is the uh, CEO and GM of the Highline Bears. And, you know, I am so ready for summer ball. I mean, I know that there's still a lot of things that have to happen safety-wise, health-wise, to allow us to have a season, uh, whether it be even a shortened season during the summer. But, man, I am chomping at the bit. I know that if you're listening to this podcast and you're still listening to this point, you're chomping at the bit as well. You are ready for baseball to be back. You're ready for sports to be happening. And I understand that. And I'm right there with you. So guys, with that great episode, I, I really appreciate having Justin come on. Tomorrow, I am excited to have on Ryan Sires. He's the assistant coach for Yakima Valley. And Ryan is addicted to one of the local restaurants here where I live. And I'll admit, I am too. It's a great place. We'll talk about that tomorrow. But guys, I am Josh, the 9 inning know-it-all. Have a great day and, you know, catch you guys later.